Okay, well, I'm David Robinson. I'm a now retired professor of economics from Lower Edgeham University, where I taught for 33 years. Um, all of that time, and quite a few years before that, <clears throat> I taught policy issues, economic policy issues. The last 10 years, I've focused a great deal on environmental economics, carbon tax, and that kind of policy. Um, I have a long history with politics. I probably have 45 years in the NDP before I decided that we needed a much stronger push on environmental issues and, in fact, the climate crisis that's coming down the track. So that's what puts me here. Um, I have a long record of making contributions to the community. I mean, I'm not going to try to convince you I'm the best candidate. Um, because I don't think I really have to. I started the School of Architecture. I really helped get the Mining Supply and Services Cluster launched. I've been on various arts groups and so on. So I have a really solid record. But my main point is you're not voting for me because you're not going to get me. You cannot have me <laughs> as, again, as your representative. So what, what I'll be focusing on when I get a chance is why you ought to vote green in a situation when you can't get a green MP. I well, thanks, that's, David. And that's, I think that's, that, that's probably a really good segue into that first question that we'll, we'll, we'll begin <clears throat> to look at some policy. So we know that um, uh, Bill C-12, the Canadian Net Zero's Emission Accountability Act, requires the setting of national targets for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions in Canada with the objective of attaining a net zero emission by 2050. Um, the targets are to be set by the Minister of the Environment for 2030, 2035, 2040, and 2045. And we know that the bill is passed and that leads us to the next, to the actual question, which is, um, whoops, <laughs> I think we gotta go back one, there we go. So um, could you speak to a couple of these points about uh, C-12? First of all, defend how your party voted on this bill. Uh, secondly, how, how might you have voted and how would you have made this policy better if you could? I don't think there's anything to defend. The bill is a good start on something that's absolutely necessary. It falls far short. Uh, the biggest criticism of this bill is the notion that we can wait to have these updates. So there are a couple features of it. One of them is that the targets are too low. These targets are actually Green Party targets from 2015. So we're glad the, the Liberals adopted it and, par and it got through Parliament with the support of the NDP. But we in the Green Party think they're out of date. We have boosted our target for 2030 to 60% reductions because we do not, that's the easy part of the reductions. The hard parts come later. What they seem to think they can do is postpone the hard parts and it's not going to do. The simple fact is that the last year has taught us the crisis is coming faster than anybody thought when we made up our 2015 targets. How would I have voted? Well, I would have voted for it because we need something. How would I change it? Well, I would be having a review virtually every year. I wouldn't let it be more than two years apart. I think that I would have a commission that had a few teeth in it rather than this weird, weak thing that the Liberals put in place. Um, the Brits have gone considerably farther on that, and I can think of a number of ways of improving it. But let's not get into the details. The question before us is, do you really believe one of the two candidates that you can vote for here and get is gonna make any difference? And they both have targets set by their parties that are too weak. The only way you can say, we want a stronger target, we want more action, is by taking votes away from them. They're competing heavily in this riding. So if they lose votes to the green, that's a strong signal. When you go into the ballot box, you get to make one squeak, little X, it can mean, gee, I like all those things you have in your, in your policy, Vivian or Nadia, maybe, and I think maybe you'll do good things. Or you can say, I want more action. One is a vague statement, one is a clear statement. 
Thank you. All right, let's move ahead to the, uh, the next question, please. So here we're looking at uh, Bill C-15, which is about enshrining the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People under national law. Um, and this declaration uh, states that Indigenous peoples have the right to conservation and the protection of the environment and the productive capacity of their lands or territories and resources. So that bill is in the past and is also now the law of the land. So we'll go to the question on the next slide. <laughs> so okay. here. I know that I can read the questions. Do you want me to just go ahead? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure, David. Thanks. Okay. We know, we know my party supported it and it asked for this for a long time. Um, <clears throat> I would have voted for it. Um, I'm not very satisfied with it, actually. Um, for one thing, the whole definition of Indigenous people in that document is cloudy and difficult to apply in a population that is as mixed as Canada's and so interpenetrated. It was not really written for a situation like Canada, and I think it could have been improved considerably. But let me say, I approve of having passed it as a statement of very important principle. Okay, thanks. Let's go ahead to the next slide here. All right, so here we're looking at uh, C230, the National Strategy to Address Environmental Racism Act. This is a private member's bill that would develop a national strategy to redress the harm caused by environmental racism. That's passed the second reading, but it's not become law. So let's go ahead. And there's three <laughs> questions for you related to that. Well, let me start at the bottom of it. I think that I agree with the principle entirely. I don't think it's simply environmental racism. I think that all the environmental crimes that are being committed across the country um, by governments, by corporations, by municipalities, by those of us who dump, dump pharmaceuticals into our toilets are serious. Um, to some extent, if I have a criticism of this bill, it's not its intent to deal with problems for some groups. It's its unintentional narrowing of the environmental question to one of race and discrimination. It's very popular in as racially segregated a country as the US to put everything in racial terms. Um, I'm not sure that that's the most appropriate framework in Canada, however popular it is among activists like the ones that I live with and, and work with. I think that in fact, we need a more unifying view of things. So how would I have made this policy better? I would have made it more inclusive and less divisive in its framing, despite the fact that its intent is almost the opposite I'm sorry, that's a sort of grumpy, critical viewpoint on people trying to make, to solve problems in a sort of fractional, segmented and sectarian way. It's a, it's, it has terrific principles in it. I approve in principle, I have personal reservations about the effects of it. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, let's go to the next question, please. Um, here we're looking at your uh, party's climate policy. So mm. there's a couple of different questions for you to consider here. What climate policy would you continue to champion, improve, or create? What would be the impact or impacts of this policy? Which experts and what evidence actually supports it? And will it encourage our global neighbors to cut emissions too? Okay, we don't have two hours. I'm sorry. So I'm not going to answer that anything like completely enough. I've literally spent years studying these kinds of questions, <laughs> taught them. Um, and one of the problems that anyone who's taught knows is that the more you study something, the harder it is to give a, a short answer. Absolutely critical. And people I don't think quite understand how important border adjustment taxes are. They're becoming popular. They've been part of our platform for a long time. 
The thing about border adjustment taxes is we start to put pressure on the rest of the world. And we make it easier to have higher carbon taxes and to act more dramatically in within Canada. Right now, the, the lack of trade fairness essentially means that we are restricted in what we can do in terms of climate policy in Canada. And so I'd make that one of the number one fights. I would want to see updates on our progress annually from an independent authority in Canada, one that was made up entirely of qualified scientists. I, I think what we have in place is a nice step in the right direction if it had been done 10 years ago. I would move the, I'd be pushing to move the targets up. And in particular, I would be pushing to increase electricity production radically. I get a lot of people mad at me for saying we cannot get to the level of electricity production we need without also including the nuclear power. That is a position which is contrary to my parties. It's not contrary to everybody in the party, but it's not our policy. We've had a policy of being anti-nuclear because of its possible connection with nuclear weapons since the 60s. Um, I and many people with technical background think that that's a mistake, that we're actually making it almost impossible to meet our targets. Um, as I mentioned, the last one, will it make it, will it encourage our global neighbors to cut emissions? I raised that first because I think that's an extremely important one, the question of border adjustments. I want to say that, that the legal opinion leans pretty heavily towards the, the view that it's legal and that we can do it unilaterally. And I think it's a matter of government cowardice on the part of the Liberals and ignorance on the part of the NDP that they aren't calling for unilateral, unilateral border adjustment taxes. I think the world would follow. They're already leaning in that direction. The Europeans will go that way soon. There's no harm in jumping ahead on this. There is harm in delaying it. Now we can go through lots of other specific policies. <clears throat> I'd like to see much sharper targets for, for when we're going to abolish the use of internal combustion engines. And I would like to move that up and set a target that is genuinely painful. Because once that happens, you start getting a decent share of the electric car market. As long as you have a, a, a target off in the future, this whole process goes slowly. I would like to see our government say, we are going to kill the oil industry. Kill it, not take the subsidies away. We should have done that five years ago. We've been proposing it for a long time ago, for a long time. I would like to see the government admit in public that the fossil fuel industry has to die. That doesn't mean we can't use oil for a few things, maybe even plastics if that works out, but no more burning fossil fuels and that has to be an explicit target of our government. Okay, um, well, thanks David. And I do appreciate, you know, up to this point, you've been very um, brief in your re responses and helping us to stay on time. So I appreciate that. Um, we do have about another five or six minutes before we shift to our two audience questions. So with that said, I mean, you, you've touched upon a number of these questions. And like you said, you put one of them, you addressed, you know, the, the, the question of the carbon tax first, so that you addressed the fourth question first, which is fine. But I just want to know, do you want another minute or two to highlight anything else that you want our viewers today to know about your, uh, the Green Party's policy? Because we do have another minute that we could dedicate to that a minute or two. I would like to say that our policies are on climate are generally significantly stronger than those of the other parties. And our policies on most other things aren't much different from the other social democratic parties, the Liberals and the NDP. They're not much different. Canadians are surprisingly close on social issues. We're making some progress. We've got a lot more progress to make. But if you go across the platforms, 
they're just variations for the most part on the same issues. You're not going to get a green government and you're not going to get a green NP, but you can say, I want more action on the one issue, on the brand of climate. This is our territory. And when you vote green, you are saying not I want something done about this issue and I want a little tax rebate on that. You're saying, first and foremost, let's ramp up climate action. That's what the X means. Okay. Well, thanks. And uh, again, for the interest of staying on time, we do have to shift to our two audience questions. So I'm these fine. are I'm comfortable with being rushed. <laughs> okay. um, so these are local questions that you know pertain to pressing issues uh, right now. So first of all, um, we know about the globally significant Wolf Lake old growth red pine forest, which is under threat from mining exploration. Mm. We also can talk about the Laurentian University green space, which we know is one of the most important community green spaces in Sudbury, and which is also essential to the watershed lake and drinking water health and that's at risk from the uh lu insolvency that's occurring so the question then from this audience member and i believe we got this one through facebook if i recall correctly uh will you commit to protecting these uh green spaces and what actions will you take to do so i am so happy that people are working on this issue and I'm working on the climate issue, and I haven't done anything personally on any of these. Um, I'm from BC. I hear my, a long time ago now, but some of the most fight, important fights are to protect special habitats, biomes in the country are going on out there right now, and I wish I was there. I am not going to be lobbying. I'm not going to be elected. Let's be honest. So my view on this, it doesn't really matter. I can only express a personal opinion. I think it's terrific that people are fighting for it. I approve of it. Um, I'll donate a little bit of money at one point or another to one or the other of these, but my focus is somewhere else. I think there's an issue that's bigger, at least for me, thinking about my grandchildren. I love these issues. I think they're important. Thank God someone's working on them, but I'm not going to. Okay. Thanks. We have uh, one question left then. That's the, the, another audience question, and it pertains to the economy and then the impacts of COVID-19. So we only have about a minute for this. So we're going to have to keep this one brief. But we know that small businesses are still suffering from the effects of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So the corresponding question is, what could you do, or pardon me, what would you do to help small businesses thrive in a low carbon economy? I don't think there's any reason to think that the low carbon economy is in any way a threat to small businesses. Whenever you have rapid technological change or rapid social change, small business tends to do better. So small business ought to be excited about moving towards a, a, a low carbon economy. There are a few things like trying to divert um, government purchasing to lo the local economy with a focus on projects that use local labor and lo local materials and the design of government projects so that they have that local content that are very important. But I wouldn't pa be panicked if I was in a small business about the future. I'd be a little bit worried if I was in the travel industry because flying to London is does more damage than the cost of the ticket and that's going to have to be stopped <laughs> on the other hand these lighter than airships that are being developed right now can do the same thing at a tenth or less of the fuel that technological change opens up huge opportunities let me stop there because there's a principle that i've expressed that i think is important yeah, well, thank you, David. So that's the uh, final question for us this evening, and we, we did end perfectly on time. So thanks for joining.